In exactly two weeks, Nigeria's governing political party, the All Progressives Congress, is expected to convoke a national convention at which elective positions will be filled, including that of the influential national chairman. In the build-up to that date in history, a good number of aspirants to the position are already at an advanced level of campaigns and consultations within the party to ensure that victory is achieved. But the party is also still struggling to find a way of offsetting the bruising drawbacks of a recent battle around the matter of which balloting patterns were adopt in selecting candidates for the positions on offer, namely a choice between the direct primaries and delegates option. Joining us now to have a chat about this is Dr. Cairo Ojogo, a chieftain of the APC. You're welcome. Good morning, Dr. Ojogo. Well, you heard us. Uh, it's two weeks to the convention of the party. And I know that you have a special interest uh, in Alaji Alimodo Sharif, uh, who has expressed interest to be the chairman of the party. Uh, two things here. One, what are your expectations on the 26th of February as to the direction that you think the party uh, will take in choosing the chairman and the other ESCO members? And secondly, uh, with the um, understanding, shall I say, uh, that the chairman may likely emerge from the north central geopolitical zone of the country, uh, how much of a chance will you give your man, uh, given the fact that he's from the northeast? No, 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 no. That is that is a fallacy. Nobody. Any, nobody has ever told you, nobody has ever announced that the chairman is coming from North Central. Have you, can you quote any person who has said so? It's just the figment of imagination and the concussion of some of persons because they do not want to face my, my principal in an election. They use the media, especially the Southwest media, to bombard the, the press that uh, it's been zoned to the North uh, Central. No. The party is still, is yet even to, to set up the zoning committee, but discussions are ongoing. But let me tell you why it will never go to the North Central. The North Central leaders met some few days and weeks ago, and they made a, 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 a copious uh, 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 appeal to the stakeholders of the APC. And amongst them, of course, you know the people who a lot of their sons and daughters are interested in the position of the president or vice presidency. And uh, from their own calculation and what they have been saying, right from the inception of uh, this uh, uh, present uh, dispensation in democracy in 1999, all the major uh, chairmen of uh, parties uh, uh, have come from uh, the North Central. Uh, take uh, uh, Solomon La, take Gamade, take uh, even right now the current chairman of, uh, of uh, PDP, all of them. And uh, they are sad, they are far that look, the chairmanship has never brought them anything. So if they can produce a chairman of party and, and they get nothing out of it, why wouldn't they be given the opportunity to produce president or vice president? That has been their position. And everybody in this country, they are all listening to it. The second issue too, why it can never go to the North Central, is that, as you can see it, it is not by happenstance that the acting chairman of the APC right now is from the Northeast. So it is the turn of the Northeast, and they will continue. So the chairmanship of APC, whether you like it or not, should and must come from the Northeast. Then you know also that in zoning party position, party positions are zoned to individuals who can do the job. And you see, it is a, a common saying in Abo, if I might speak my language, so if you can catch a cow, then when they are looking for people who can catch a cow, they will bring you and then you go there and then they take and catch the cow. So positions are zoned to people who, who can do the job. So I, I, I think uh, that matter, and I wonder why the press will continue to even make uh, any form of uh, 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 assertion that is zoned to the North Central. There is nobody, nobody, you can't quote any official of the party that says it. It is just in the air there from the southwest, you know, because they have, uh, 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 they have some persons, some individuals 
they think will do their bidding. You know how it is in politics. They want people who they can shout at. They want people who they can uh, intimidate. They give them money, give me a ticket, and they take the ticket. No, but that will not help APC. If you go that way, APC will have very difficult and struggle times in 2023. Understood. But let well, me go to the method of uh, what? Please continue. You asked two questions. Yes, go ahead, yes, please. You asked two go questions, ahead. so let me go to the second one. The, the, the issue of direct or indirect primary for the, uh, for, the, for the APC convention. To me, as a person, from what I see on the ground, and without sounding any models, my, my little experience, it is obvious that uh, it will be a delegate's election. It will be uh, an indirect primary. Because we cannot go back to the field now and uh, go to the states and then uh, start voting and all whatnot. And then, because of the number of uh, positions to be uh, contested, it is overwhelming for you to say direct primaries. So it is better to bring all the, uh, uh, all the delegates to one spot, everybody that are representatives, uh, enough of the body of the, of the, uh, uh, the, body of the, uh, uh, of the party, so that they can now choose their, the, the respected uh, leaders they want uh, to choose. So definitely, I am very sure. Uh, I don't need to look at a crystal ball to see this. I'm sure that it will be an indirect uh, uh, primary. So that is what I feel is my personal opinion on this issue of whether it will be direct or indirect primary. But I do know that for efficiency, for clarity, for, 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 for sincerity of purpose, and to make sure that uh, 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 a level playing ground is uh, provided for all the aspirants, it has to be an indirect primary. Understood. I mean, if we take a, a thank few, you. thank you. If we take a few steps back to uh, the earlier part of your answer to Steve's question, uh, you you vehemently denied a confirmation that the APC would zone um, its its party chairmanship to the northeast. And I, I guess we all agree. We're all looking forward to the twenty sixth, I believe, of this 26th month of February, yes. uh, to to find out what the case may be. But that being said, it's no secret that you are in support of Senator Ali Modu Sharif. And I, you know, in his absence, I would like to ask you, you know, some questions. It is no secret that party politics in Nigeria is fluid. Politicians jump from one party to the other, so mostly really um, for personal political gain or to improve their chances, whatever the case may be. But we all know that Senator Sharif is vying to become the national chairman of the APC. And that is coming after a checkered history in the same position at the People's Democratic Party. And, you know, even throughout his political career, there have been accusations of high level corruption, accusations of um, the senator being involved in the creation of a terrorist group. So I would like to ask you, again, in his absence, why should he become the chairman of the APC despite uh, a checkered history, as I said? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You see, uh, first of all, my, my, my first reaction would have been to, to, to take the three questions you are, answer one and leave the other. Because, but let me start from the one that uh, I believe I should speak about more. Talk about corruption. Sharif is the only governor in Nigeria that when you look at his handover note to his successor, he left 69 billion when he was leaving office in 2011. Go and check any other state, nobody. And Sharif has no, no case in EFCC or anywhere. Where is the high uh, corruption? Where is the high level of uh, uh, corruption coming from? You see, the you journalists, before you ask questions, do your homework first. Before you ask this question, what you would have done was call EFCC. Does this man have a pending case? Call uh, ICPC. Call the police. And then before you bring it to the public. But are you denying that, the that there have been accusations of, of corruption? One minute. Well, if you ask court. me a question, let me answer. Understood. Me I, just, answer. I would like to know if, that's, answer, if that is true. There have obviously been uh, accusations, which is what I asked. They might not have been substantiated, but they do exist. Yeah. You know, you see, you know, listen. Can I answer, please? Yes. Now listen, please. Don't, you see, 
For, you are a woman. I don't know whether you're married or not, but you have a family. When you g get up like this and accuse a man of such things, don't forget that he has family too, he has children. And this is the, why we, we destroy ourselves in this country. Questions asked on public, before you bring such questions to the public, you have to also verify it. Now, let me go to the issue of uh, Boko Haram. Now, today, before Sheriff became a governor, there was the Montesana riot in the north, everywhere. Was it Sheriff that caused it? Before he became a governor, the issue of uh, Yusuf and his followers were already on the ground in Borno State. Sheriff came to meet it. As soon as he became governor of Borno State, he now proscribed the, uh, uh, the association and then expelled and with the, with the state with cooperation of the federal government, those of them from Niger and the uh, Chad Republic, he sent them out. And then he promulgated the decree in the state, banning them. Now, in all fairness, a man who has done this, you turn around because they of the man's uh, political achievement. And then you have the F country. People have, I don't understand this country. You call him a Boko Haram. You see, we, we, the, the wrath of God will strike at the right time and the necessary time. Nigerians should change a little bit. We must begin to address issues properly. We must begin to know that when you come on stage, national television, to cast as passion and say things you don't believe, say things that are not true, against an innocent soul, it is not the way a country is built. This sort of journalism, a sort of questions, you don't ask them overseas. You don't ask them in advanced democracies. But we can ask anything in Nigeria because our press, which I even know is the freest press in the entire world. The Nigerian press is not the freest press. What we like. Social media. Social the Nigerian media, press is not the freest press this? in the world. It, 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 in I fact, it, can I press freedom in can Nigeria has been falling down. Can I finish? The can rankings. I finish? Just to correct you on that. Make, go ahead. Finish? Make your point, Dr. Jugo. Just yes. make your can point. Can I finish, please? Yeah, if no you problem. interrupt me, if. If you interrupt me, I can't continue. I can't, you will let me miss It's not a problem. Just, just make so your point, I'm please. What I'm saying yeah. is that... Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yes, yes. So, you see, that is what... Yes. Yes. So, you see, and let me... When it comes to the issue of Sheriff and the PDP, that, uh, yes, if you, that question I accept because it needs explanation. Here is a man sitting down in his house. And if this man had been Boko Haram, the PDP, the whole body of PDP would not approach him. Because we know ourselves, we are politicians. They say, come and become our chairman. PDP will not be stupid to take that, to take that as a position. And in any case, Sherry made a proper consultation among his political family. This is a position I have been offered. Can I accept it? I will not go. So he went. When he got there, he told the PDP, look, if you want to win election, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. We must be truthful to ourselves. We must carry everybody along. And we must not oppress anybody. But the chieftains of PDP don't believe in that. So Sherry said, OK, if it's like that, goodbye to you. And so he left. So if anything, it's an advantage for him. Because he knows the workings of that party. Because he went in training. Because he's the one who, who knows how that party thinks. And he, he knows the one, as chairman of the party, how to tackle that party. So all right, you can all see right, that all right, all right, Dr. in Jugo. all fairness. Okay. So both, thank you. Thank okay, you. okay, yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like, well, like to come in now. I mean, uh, first to establish the fact that uh, journalists do not seek to malign uh, Elijah uh, 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 Sharif, uh, Ali Sharif, uh, Bunu Sharif. No, not at all. Uh, and I also think that um, it would be unfair you know, to cast as passion uh, on journalists when they do their jobs, when they're asking basic questions so that they can give opportunities to people <laughs> who speak on his behalf so that they can defend him. You know, of course, that the leading... No, no. Uh, just a moment, no, sir. Just, I, I, I just, don't, just, just a moment, sir. With you. Just I, a moment, please. Okay. You know that there are leading lights, the, leading, the two leading lights in the two major political parties. Uh, neither of them, you know, has been found wanting in any court of law, or even, you know, maybe dealing with any EFCC cases. I'm talking about uh, former Vice President Atiku and Ashwa Jibola Tinubu. Yet, every time people interrogate based on the perception, 
based on what people are saying on social media within their parties everywhere they do not i do not i do not think that they take it personal the way that you are taking it and i do not think that it matters uh, the, the, the marital status of anybody who is asking you questions based on the person that you are proposing to be the chairman of a, of a ruling political party. I, I do not think that that is fair. I do not think it is professional. <laughs> but I understand that in politics, uh, certain things come with the territory. Um, however, moving forward, um, what basically, yeah. uh, in essence, do you think that uh, Ali Modu Sharif is bringing on board uh, from the notice, you said it's most likely that it will go there. But then why is he so desperate? Uh, it seems that he wants to be the chairman of APC. Does he, for example, have any preference as to who should rule Nigeria in 2023? We know for a fact that his, that his successor in Borno State already has already pitched his tent with a candidate. Does your man have a preference? What, you, what, what actually... Does he want to do with the party? What are the two key important things that he seeks uh, to bring uh, on board as the chairman of the APC? Th thank you. Thank Again, let me also, please permit me to, 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 to differ from you. Sheriff is not desperate. And it is wrong to describe him as desperate. I want to put that aside. That, 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 that's okay. That's now, fine. Thank you. What would, yeah, yes. What will Sherry bring to the table? Let me also, if I have spoken wrongly about asking the marital status of the lady, I don't know her. I want to say that no, that was not. I didn't mean to my line her by that or no. What I'm saying is that, as a mother, because she's a woman, and our women are our mothers, and when we see our children being crowning them. With, with evil cap that they don't deserve, the women worry a lot. So I wasn't being, fem I wasn't being uh, oppressive or being uh, in any way. Uh, please, madam, if that was offending, I apologize. Now, what would Sheriff bring to the table? One, experience. He knows the major opposition party very well. He's the only aspirant that is, is so vested. Two, Sheriff understands the working of the National Assembly. Having won an election three times into the Senate. Three, Sheriff has been a two-time governor. And as a two-time governor, you, you, you want to come and... Uh, the, the, uh, so as a two-time governor, Sheriff has a... Sharif has a good knowledge of how government works. We put that aside. As a, a, a businessman, he understands how to handle the economy. So he can have a say and advise government. Because the relationship between the party and the government, when the party is successful, is like the chicken and the egg. Four, Sheriff having been a governor, he will, accord, he will accord the governors of the party maximum respect because he has been a governor. And he believes, and I, you can quote me anywhere, the governors will have their due respect. And he will work with the, govern, with the governors and work with the party and everybody will be happy. Again, it is easier for APC to win the election in, two, in 2023 with Sheriff as chairman. Let me tell you, most Nigerians know this. Because Sheriff will tell you the truth, will tell you how it is. Sheriff is the person who can sit and reconcile the party the way the party is now. If you give the chairmanship to somebody who cannot sit and reconcile, if you give it to somebody who will go and and um, who, who is easily compromised. You know how things are. A lot of politicians see positions as, ah, this is my turn. Let me stuff my pocket. Sheriff is not somebody like that. Sheriff is only interested in achievement. 
is that uh, Sharif is interested in the well-being of Nigerians and in the well-being of the party. All right, Dr. So Jugo, be, be, before we Nigeria let you go. I continue to move forward. Okay, Dr. Jugo, before we let you go, I know that you have expressed. I'm enjoying this interview. Why, why are you hurrying me? I no, no, no. I, question. I'm enjoying I this still interview. have one more question, which I'm is. I'm not in a hurry to go. We, <laughs> no, we're also dealing with time. All right. Uh, I would like you to comment <laughs> no, about. No, no, no. I, I like your interview. I like your thank interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would like you to comment about the Delta uh, uh, gubernatorial election. I know that you have expressed you know, certain sentiments about, <laughs> the, about the leaders coming together, etc. Are you likely to throw your own heart into the ring, for example? And, and what's your assessment of the preparedness of your party in Delta State? Uh, well, because, um, according to Juku, because I'm, I'm involved, it's difficult to, for me to speak about it. But let me tell you, the party has to do something in Delta, otherwise forget 2023. Because right now, the entire party structure is given to one man. And it can't work. You, I don't need to look at a crystal ball to know that it won't work. Whatever the man wants to do, let him do, but it won't work. So th that is why... Are you, are you talking about Omar Gege or you are talking about the, the Honorable Minister? Who among them holds the structure? No, I'm talking about Omar Gege. Yeah, I'm talking about the DSP. Okay. The whole structure, including my own in my village, was given to him. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> how does it work? <laughs> I laugh. <laughs> so, we as party men, party leaders, 12, a committee of 12 party leaders, properly constituted by the party, you turn around and you give it to one person. Well, some people, some went to court. I didn't go to court. All right. Some we they called off for the reconciliation. They called off for the reconciliation committee. We went there. When we got there, the uh, Abdullah Adamu committee said that they will use uh, only uh, statutory delegates for Delta. We are yet to know if that is what will happen. So we are waiting. Uh, but let me assure you, tell uh, Deltans of something. We must find a solution in Delta. It's the same family. No one man can be everybody. So we, uh, I want to use this opportunity to appeal to Deltans. Please, don't leave the party anymore. Stay where you are. The party is working hard All to find a solution. All righty. Dr. Karo Jogo, thank you very much for joining us on the morning show today.